Hello runners, this is Bob Becker, race director for the Keys 100, and welcome to our new video series, Successfully Crewing at Keys 100. Crewing can be a very rewarding experience. It is you as crew members, after all, who will be sure that the runner gets to the finish line. Without you, that probably wouldn't happen. It's a very inspirational experience too, but it's also very hard. There are definitely do's and definitely don'ts, and for those of you who are new at crewing or running with a crew, this is your opportunity to learn from some experts some best practices that should help you on race day. What I look for when trying to build up a great team, a great crew and have a great crew chief is truly somebody that has my best interest at heart, that has my goal at the forefront, that doesn't have any ulterior motives that they want to cover 20 miles or 30 miles that if you're going to crew for me for the 50 or, or for the 100 mile that you are are truly there to support uh, my dream and my goal um, it's really best if you can pick somebody that knows you really well that has you know empathy for you that's actually strong who will help hold you accountable to what it is that you've set out to do. Sometimes it's really tough to get people that that know you because they might be also running the race or, you know, doing their their own thing. And often you have to pick people or ask people that you don't know. And certain questions you want to ask them is a little bit about their experience. And it's always nice to pick a rookie crew because they want to have experience. And I have found for sure, either getting people who know me really well or a rookie crew that's there to just do whatever you want them to do because they, they, they want to learn. It's very important to have a crew chief that's one person that is in charge of not only the crew, but also the runner. And that person is the go-to person. When people get really tired, they get heat fatigue, they get sleep deprived, they're crewing the Keys 100 and they've been awake for 28 hours. People become a little moody. They're hot, they're tired, they're sweaty. Um, really having to take ownership of yourself. And before you speak, think about what you're gonna say. So from my perspective as, as the runner, <laughs> um, you know, there's no one better that that can crew me. I Like Scott, you know, almost anticipates my needs and just knows my moods. So when I come up into the area that he's gonna crew me, he almost automatically seems to know like, you need this, you need this and you need this. And it's so, it happens so naturally. I don't even have to ask for anything. Well, I think it's best to talk with each member individually ahead of time. That way, when you do get together or have a Zoom call or an in-person meeting, Everybody already kind of knows what they're being asked to do. The the runner kind of sets forth expectations, uh, you know, a best case scenario, worst case scenario, the most likely scenario, and then work together with your crew and let them know, you know, what are all the different components and what it is that you're going to be facing. And then also, you know, let them know what tasks you would like them to handle. Well, my, my last race at Daytona 100, I had three crew members and I think, I think three is a great, um, number, uh, four is okay as well. Um, you know, you can also go with two. I think two is a little bit slim, especially for a, a race such as Keys 100, which is, um, you know, it's an iconic race, uh, but it's also a very challenging race due to the nature of the heat and the humidity. Coming from Jackson, Wyoming, where I live and going to Florida, it's a big switch with weather. I think it's important that a crew is somewhat acclimated to the heat, somewhat maybe has sat in the sauna, if they're coming from a different environment, that they've sat in the sauna, they've done some hot yoga, they're out doing some of their own training where they're wearing extra clothes to experience how hot it might be. So you have to gain a lot of knowledge of what do I need to eat, drink, and how do I best take care of myself, first of all, before I can even think of taking care of my runner. And really being prepared 
for the worst possible heat you could imagine and hope that it's not so bad. Because if you're overly prepared, you're never going to be disappointed.